I'm reading to you from the authorized version of the scriptures. If you have a copy of the authorized version, please go ahead and grab it. Read along with me today at the scriptures we will be looking at. Read along with me, word for word, verse by verse. Read along with me, be a Berean. Search the scriptures daily, whether these things be so. Read along with me because my mouth will go quicker than my brain. And it happens quite often, actually, unfortunately. <laughs> Get your authorized version of the scripture. Wow, I can see. <laughs> Turn in your authorized version of the scriptures to Leviticus 19. Just one verse to start here. Verse 32. Thou, that's singular, thou shalt rise up before the hoary head and honor the face of the old man and fear thy God. I am the Lord. In the book of Ephesians, chapter 6, in the book of Ephesians, chapter 6, verses 1 on to verse 4. Children. Children. Now. Now. You could be 40 years of age. And your father or your mother, father and mother, could be in their 60s, late 60s. You are still their child. You are still their child. I, I remember hearing about um, when uh, uh, parents and children argue that the child will say to his father or her father or whatever, it's like, I'm not a child anymore. It's like, you're my child. That, that dynamic doesn't disappear. With some of you, you might want that to be Sooner or later, you're going to have to deal with it. And that which um, has been neglected will come again. You mark my words. But children. Now, context here <coughs> that we're going to see is a clear reference onto like a little regret. Okay? But you also have to keep in mind that dynamic that is between father and mother and child. Okay, you have to remember that. Keep that in mind. Because today, as a, as a continuation upon the previous video, today we are going to talk about elders. Elderly. And that elders ought to be respected. And there is provision given even within Scripture where this concept of taking care of elderly people, widows, orphans, stuff like that, but this concept that the Lord makes through provision through family, but makes provision through things to care for those who can no longer care for themselves. And that's what we're going to be addressing today. <coughs> Think about it. When, you, when a child is brought into, uh, into this world, okay, you as a father and mother, uh, or unfortunately as it is in this society today, and oh, and before we go any further, brethren of other nations, brethren, I can only speak from the viewpoint of Jesuit America, okay? I do not know what it is like in your nation. But what we are going to be examining today kind of crosses many lines, okay? But <clears throat> when you have a child, what's what's the thing? You you clean up after a child. You what do you, you know? You ch change his poopy diapers and wipe his bum or whatever, and you know that eventually that this child is going to grow up. He or she. There's only two genders. 
And, you, you know, you're not going to always have to do that for them. They're going to be able to feed themselves. They're going to be able to learn and that kind of stuff. So you know that it's going to gradually cease and that they're going to go on and grow up. But what happens when we get to an age where it goes back to that? A couple days ago, my wife and I, we went to go visit a relative or family friend, whatever she is, um, in a nursing home. And this woman is in her 80s. And she, she needs to be fed through a tube. She needs to be changed. She needs to be coddled after. I don't even know if that's the right word. But she needs to be cared for. <coughs> As if she is a child again. Isn't that something? Isn't that something? Now you, now you think about that. Roll that around in your brain case for a little bit. Because what are we taught today? Huh? Satan, through the Jesuit order, is seeking to get that generation that's going to be left behind prepared for that coming of that man of sin, the son of perdition. Okay? And the generations that have come in America ever since the baby boomers, and I believe the baby boomers are the offspring of those coming back from World War II. I was corrected on that in a video in the comment section. If I got that wrong, I will be corrected again. But, you know, the baby boomer generation and then so on and so on and so on. And each generation here in America, and that's the only one I can speak on, keeps declining, declining. And today, a very bizarre phenomenon. I have seen, I have seen elderly women who look, because of war paint and stuff like that, who look as if they're in their 20s and they strive to be young again. I've also seen this with elderly men in their 60s, okay? In Scripture, we're told that our years are three score years and ten, or two, four, six, or whatever, or 70 years, and if it's 80 years, it's by reason of strength. So when an individual gets to their 60s, they're going downhill. I mean, you can, you can take care of your body the best you can. You can, I mean, praise the Lord if your uh, facilities are all there. But you are declining. You are declining. You are. You are. You are. But I have seen this with the elderly people of today and also with older people then even of their 60s, 70s, and 80s. Okay? Still trying to reclaim that thing of youthfulness. Because we are being taught that, you know, youth is in. Okay? Thin is in. Be young. Beauty is young, right? Is it? Let's say it's scriptures. Children, obey your parents in the Lord. For this is right. Honor thy father and mother, which is the first commandment with promise. And of course, he's making reference to the Torah, to the Ten Commandments, Exodus chapter 20, verse 12. I'm not going to go there, okay? That thou, that it may be well with thee, and thou live, mayest live long on the earth. Verse 4. Verse 4. And ye father. Provoke not your children to wrath, but bring them up in the nurture and admonition of the system. <coughs> Excuse me. Of philosophy. Of gender equality.
bring them up in the nurture and admonition of the Lord. No, in the book of Proverbs, we're told that, you know, if you love your son, you will beat him with the rod. That doesn't mean you abuse him for your own kicks. It's like when they, they deserve a whooping, you give him a whooping. Okay? You give him a whooping. All right? And when he's older, he'll thank you. Or she'll thank you. It's like, you know, I, I see around here, there's this gal that walks around with a big pit bull and has her baby in a sling right in front, like in her bosom and whatnot, walking around this huge pit bull. I like pit bulls, okay? They got a bad rap, but whatever, okay? And I, and I keep thinking when I see that, it's like, you know, now granted, don't see what goes on, you know, that kind of stuff uh, behind closed doors, and praise the Lord. But, you know, I see stuff like that, it's like, hmm, are you afraid of picking them up or, you know, holding the little kid or something like that? It's like, and we've seen when we've been out shopping, we've seen the same thing with the mothers, you know, having the children right here in front of them. And it's designed that way so their hands are free, so like George Carlin even said, that they can go through merchandise. Huh? Hmm. Making this thing of childbearing and child rearing in person. Very, very, very interesting. Very interesting. Very interesting. So what we see here is that in Ephesians chapter 6, we see that the children are being told, it's like, hey, obey your parents in the Lord. But also, ultimately, that ye fathers. The father is to be the law, as it were while the mother is to be the compassion, as it were. Okay? Okay. There's, there's a distinct system there. And then what happens? The sodomite comes along. It's like, well, two men can do that. A man can be the sensitive nurturing. But see, ultimately, that destroys the foundation. And the foundation is what? Christ. But if Christ isn't your foundation, then your foundation is built on sand. Sand, which is a bunch of little bitty tiny little stones and shifts. Okay? Because I've talked with people. It's like, well, you know, what about the sodomites? They have a loving family, environment, and it's like, okay, but nonetheless, the whole structure has been tainted, okay? That's a different uh, thing that we're kind of branching off of, okay? I want to stick to this about the elders. And why are we bringing this up? Because verse 4, and ye fathers, provoke not your children to wrath. And today, well, you know, rebellious children because their parents, their fathers, want them not to do certain things for their betterment, and then they rebel and that kind of stuff and whatnot. That generally happens. This is being addressed as in excessiveness. Okay? Being excessive. All right? If you have a child, you got to let the child walk and fall down a couple of times. He'll get the hang of it. Like when I was growing up, we had uh, playground stuff uh, made out of metal. You slide down a slide, you get a sunburn on your buttocks, okay, from sliding down a metal slide, okay. You fall down and you scrape yourself off, you know, scrape yourself, rub a little dirt on it and go play, okay. Hmm. Nowadays, they got like uh, shredded rubber, rubber tires instead of sand. Because if any of you have fallen on sand before, like a, that, that that really hurts, doesn't it? But you fall on these uh, like old tractor tires now instead of sand. The point is that the children today are being coddled, pampered, and hence becoming growing tyrannical into a woke society that you see outside your door right now. This is not the case in all scenarios. No, it is not. But it is the majority of it. It is. 
when these people with their baseball and watching their kids making them little idols, it's grotesque. It's grotesque. And ye fathers, provoke not your children to wrath, but bring them up in the nurture and admonition of the Lord, which is the missing ingredient today. The missing ingredient today. Fathers, the elder that have been there are the ones that are supposed to be bringing up the younger generation and what has happened first hmm? Peter chapter 5 first Peter chapter 5 verses 1 on to verse 5 first Peter chapter 5 1 on to verse 5 The elders which are among you I exhort, who am also an elder. <laughs> Peter was never a pope. Catholics. And a witness of the sufferings of Christ, and also a partaker of the glory that shall be revealed. Peter's like, okay, yeah, I've, I've been there since the beginning, but you got to remember... I'm a servant of the Lord just like you. Now, the context here is elder. The elders, okay, which are among you I exhort, okay? Verse 2. Feed the flock of God which is among you, taking the oversight thereof, not by constraint, but willingly. Not for filthy lucre, but of a ready mind. Now stop. Paul admonishes that a novice ought not to be in the place thereof to what? Feed the flock. And, they, and everyone to defend this or to speak against this, they always go to Timothy. And they're, they're right, but they like to overstep the thing that Timothy was brought up how? Go there, okay? 2 Timothy chapter 3, verse 15, uh, 14 and 15. They do. Because Paul says, not a novice, like the fledgling of pride. Not a novice. Lest he get lifted up in pride and fall in the condemnation of the devil. Okay? Not a novice. The Lord can use novices. Absolutely. But see, they say, well, what about Timothy? Paul says, let no one despise their, your youth. You're right, he said that. Why did he say that? Verse 14 and 15. But continue thou in the things which thou hast learned and hast been assured of, knowing of whom thou hast learned them. Now, he was brought up by his grandmother and his mother and stuff like that because his father was a Greek. Okay? Remember, Timothy was half-breed. Okay? Timothy was a half-breed of Shem and Japheth. All right? But, ultimately, who is the one who taught Timothy? It was the Lord. Okay? And that from a child. Child. Little regret. Thou hast known the Holy Scriptures, which are able to make thee wise unto salvation through faith which is in Christ Jesus. When anyone wants to, you know, whenever this comes up, like I said, they all go to Timothy, but they all also overstep that little detail. That yes, Timothy, he was a, he was probably in his mid to late twenties, and he was he was doing, you know. Yes, he was. Timothy was brought up. Brought up in the scriptures. Train up a child in the way he should go, and when he is old, he will not depart from it. Proverbs 22, 6. Okay? See, Satan's using the younger generation. And the younger generations who are hot. When you were 20 years old... You think you knew everything, right? You say you, I wasn't like that. 
You lie and your breath stink. I can smell it here. Even over this plastic computer. You lie. You lie. I have yet to encounter a 20-year-old. 20-year-old meaning from like 20 to 25. Uh, when the 20-year-old starts to get near 30, you start to realize a few more things that you don't know everything. Okay? Especially from like 16 to like 24 or something like that. You all think you know everything, don't you? Yeah, don't you? Don't you? But see, Timothy was brought up in the admonition of the Lord in the scriptures, making it a different dynamic. And see, the fathers, the mothers, yes, the parents today are to bring up the children in the admonition of the Lord. But what has happened? What has happened? The parents have handed their children over to the Jesuits. And that's significant when considering this thing about the elderly. Because when you have a generation of children being pampered, treated like idols, what happens when they grow up? You're going to have a mess on your hands. That thing of entitlement. And that, that's, I reckon, going on in most, gen uh, most nations under heaven today. But back in 1 Peter, Again, in verse 1, the elders there, the idea here that those who are elders, excuse me, that have been there, done that, that have had their senses exercised by reason of use, okay, that have that experience that they can bring up and help the younger. Feed the flock of God which is among you, taking the oversight thereof. Not by constraint, but willingly. Not for filthy lucre, but of a ready mind. Verse 3. Neither being lords over God's heritage, but being in samples, I love that word, of the flock. Not like diatrophies, okay? Or diotrephes, it's diatrophies, okay? Not being little diatrophies. Getting, you know, all puffed up in yourself. You know, like certain people. Okay? No. We live and lead by example. And when you got the older generation coddling to the younger generation, and that older generation wanting to be like that, we got a problem. Houston, we got a problem. And when the, verse 4, and when the chief shepherd shall appear, ye shall receive a crown of glory that fadeth not away. Verse 5. Likewise ye younger. Now, there is a difference here between younger and children. Okay? There is a difference. There is a difference. Children are younger, yes. But younger there could be anything from, uh, for example... I'm going to be 50 next year if the Lord allows it. Okay? If you're in your 30s, I got 19 years on you. Okay? Sorry for saying that. You're younger than me. Okay? All right? Likewise, ye younger, submit yourselves unto the elder. Yea, all of you be subject one to another and be clothed with humility. For God resisteth the proud and giveth grace to the humble. And then right away, see, they, they seek to justify themselves just as if I. It's like, well, what if the elder isn't doing it? Okay, well, and we're going to address that a little later. But see, that, what comes up first? That thing of justifying themselves rather than what? Submitting to, well, what if the elder is an idiot? Why don't you first submit yourself onto that elder and then see what happens? Like the generations before us, when they were told, jump! They say, how high? Now, jump! Why do I got to do anything you say? And this 
this is coming from someone who can't have a child. And there are those of you who have children out there. I'm going to leave that one alone. I'm going to leave that one alone. Because uh, I dealt with, um, with my father. I had to go looking for my father. And I found him. And sooner or later, every one of you fathers, every one of you mothers who have a daughter, who have a son, Sooner or later, they're going to come looking for you. Sooner or later, you mark my words. And I hope you're ready for that. But right there, verse 5. Likewise, ye younger, submit yourselves unto the elder. And, and you go to 2 Corinthians, 2 Corinthians chapter 12. 2 Corinthians chapter 12, verses 14 and 15. Behold, the third time I am ready to come to you, and I will not be burdensome to you. For I seek not yours, but you. For the children ought not to lay up for the parents, but the parents for the children. He's talking about spiritually, but you know, he being the elder, laying up for the children so that the children, spiritual you know, in the Lord, the children in the Lord, can grow up and then do the same thing. It's that system as it were, okay, that cycle, I don't want to say cycle of life because it's whatever, but it's that cycle, okay, the elder, the parents, laying up for the children. The children, when they grow up, then they take care of the elder who taught them to uh, be providing for people. Okay? And then it circulates. But see, there's a cog missing in that machine today, isn't there? Verse 15. And I will gl very gladly spend and be spent for you, though the more abundantly I love you, the less I be loved. And today, you see parents, yeah, spending for their children. But giving them to every whim, not bringing them up in this nurture and admonition of the Lord. And hence making little monsters, little idols out of their children. I've seen this! <laughs> I've, my wife has seen this, you have seen it. Okay? You're making little terrors! And that's just what Satan wants. Okay? Is this how it is in every circumstance? No, it isn't. It is the majority, however. There are parents out there who do right. There are. There are parents out there today, in this day and age, who do bring up their children in the nurture and admonition of the Lord. Say what you want about the guy. I got my own opinions. His holiness from Maine. He's doing it right by his son. Okay? You, whatever you want to say about that guy, you can't take away the fact and you got to give him the credit where it's due. He's doing right by his son. you got to give that guy. Even though a lot of you hate him. Okay? I'm not crazy about the guy myself. Okay? I'm really not. But you got to give the guy credit for doing it right by his son. Okay? That's, that's the right way to do it. Okay? There are others out there. I use him as an example because he's the only one that I can think of right off the top of my head. Sorry. Sorry. Okay? But, like I said, doing it the right way in the nurture and admonition of the Lord. Okay? I'm telling you, that kid's going to grow up right. Okay? <laughs> okay? Leave it alone. That was just an example. you got to give the credit where it's due. Okay? You, you have to. But see, Paul laying up for the children and spending and willing to be spent for them. Why? So when they get to that point, when they have those experiences, when they have those things, they have their uh, senses exercised by reason of use, that they can do the same thing with another generation that's coming up. And you look at these stupid Christians. 
That, that, that's not even a consideration. Okay? The atheists that attack Christianity, hey, you're right. You're right. You're absolutely right. You're right to attack Christianity. Because Christianity is not the faith that was once delivered unto the saints. Then you hear about like, like that stuff that was going on with the Southern Baptists, with all the child molestation and stuff like that. And then you got the Jesuit Catholic uh, Baal priest perverts saying like, ha ha, look at you guys, you're no different than us. And the truth is they're not. Are they? Are they? Proverbs 17. And see, what we're looking at right now, what we have already looked at, is this principle that the elder generation is supposed to take the younger generation and bring them up in the nurture and admonition of the Lord. That is not here nowadays. It is there sporadically, sparsely, yes, but it is, it's in the majority, it is lacking today. Look at America. Look at America. And see, there are those out there who think that they can reclaim something to go back to something. America's gone. There is that video of that uh, sweet 90-year-old, I believe, I think he's 90, um, World War II veteran, and it's gut-wrenching. World War II, it's like he's bawling. It's like the things that we fought, uh, fought for and the things that we died for, it's all gone to hell. You know, this is not it. Okay? This is not it. I can't, I, I watched that video. I, I think it's in my like thing, which you guys can't see, of course. But I, I've watched that a couple of times, and I can't keep my eyes dry. Even my glass one, brother. I can't keep my eyes dry when I watch that because... And then, and then the sweet little daughter or whatever comes in there and nurtures him. It's like, and he's like, I'm just tired. Proverbs 17. Proverbs 17. When the elder no longer is willing, but seeks to live selfishly, vicariously through their children, then you're going to go off track. Proverbs 17, verses 1 on verse 8. Better is a dry morsel and quietness there than a house full of sacrifices with strife. A dry little morsel. Than a house full of sacrifices. Perfect example. I have relatives whose children, um, the, 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 the son was in the motorcycles and the daughter was in the horses. Two of the most expensive hobbies that you can ever have. And they vir virtually almost made themselves destitute. Now they've grown up and become very what well, you know good kids themselves in you know light of certain things. But see, better to have a little with the fear of the Lord. Okay? Better is a dinner of herbs where love is than a stalled ox and hatred therewith. Hmm? Think about that. Think about the parents that are working all these jobs to provide their kids, to send them off to a college of Jesuits to get their mind messed up, number one, okay? But yet also coddling them, but yet at the same time, in selfish manner, seeking to live vicariously through their children. And some of you might be like, well, what's wrong with that? It's not about you. It's about them. See, it's not about you. Okay? That's what we got to remember, dear saints. That's what we got to remember. Okay? It's not about you. And when you have the older generation not taking the time. Th this, what's going on, this is the consequence of the parents saying, taking the kids off to the Jesuits. 
to the schools, to the government, to the system. This is the consequence of it. Is it any wonder why your son has grown up to be a queer, girly, emo boy? Huh? What did I do wrong? Oh, I don't think you want to hear what you did wrong. Do you? A wise servant shall have rule over a son that causeth shame and shall have part of the inheritance among the brethren. Discipline. Discipline. That's denoting discipline. A wise servant, one who fears the Lord, shall have rule over a son that causeth shame. When your child does something wrong, get that belt out. It's like, hey, you see that? You go to the tree, you pick your twitch, and I'm going to whoop your rear end, boy. I have heard of today, recent, like in the past couple of years, well, that's why I mean when I say recent, of people sticking their nose in someone else's business because a father took his belt off and slapped his uh, boy on the rear end with his belt. They called the cops on him. Called the cops on him. I have even heard of children calling the police on their own parents for child abuse because they disciplined their child for doing contrary to what is right. Simple stuff like stealing. Spank them for stealing. And then they call the cops on their own parents? Hmm. See, that, this is what has happened when father and mother have been replaced by the Jesuit. This is what has happened. And the generations that are coming, that keep coming and coming, and look to the government instead of the Lord. They'll look to the Jesuits instead of the Lord. And see, it's past the point of no return for us here in America. On the individual basis, it isn't. But in the, in the totality, it is. The finding pot is for silver and the furnace for gold, but the Lord trieth the hearts. A wicked doer giveth, doer giveth he to false lips. Put this in the equation. A wicked doer. It's better that you give your children over to the Jesuits. Oh, excuse me, to the public school systems or even to a private school system. It's, it's a good thing that you do that. It, it, it free you up to make money so you can buy merchandise and make little idols out of your kids. Wicked doer giveth heed to false lips. You shouldn't discipline your child. That's child abuse. Children are saying, are being taught in these schools to squeal on their parents. They did that during the Jesuitical uh, psychological operation about the <laughs> stuff. They even started, you could find that on, on some of the uh, websites still that are still up about that, where the kids in school were being told, it's like, hey, if your parents don't, are not doing you know, right by the uh, mandates, squeal on them! Those of you out there with a memory of even two years ago, you know that's what was going on. And those of you who have children in this satanic system, you know, you know, don't you? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. A wicked doer giveth heed to false lips, and a liar giveth ear to a naughty tongue. He hath God said, the ultimate naughty tongue. Whoso mocketh the poor reproacheth his maker, and he that is glad at calamities shall not be unpunished. Even the one enemy that I hate, to find out that he were on life support or having heart tr uh, problems because of his smoking, um, I would not be glad at that calamity. I would not be. 
because I know where he's going. I know where he's going. I do want him out of the way, obviously, but um, not glad at the calamities. Okay. Children's children are the crown of old men, and the glory of their children are their fathers. I cannot tell you how many kids I have spoken to that say they hate their father. Why do you hate your father? You know what I hear? Because, and there's a brother of ours, a dear brother of ours, who could give a testimony to this. Um, and uh, I kind of wish you would, but that, that's uh, for, the, for the body of Christ. About, um, he has a grandson. And the grandson's father is what we're talking about. It's all about him. He does things vicariously so that he may justify and gratify himself rather than sacrificing as in means of charity for his son. And it's all about him. And the child, it says of his father, I hate my father. Why do you hate your father? Because his father is all about himself. And see? generations that have been coming that are coming that have been it keeps going down because ye shall be as gods knowing good and evil I will I will I will I will okay this is the consequence this is the result we are seeing it okay and those that are elders today are from my generation and even from generations of the 60s and 70s, which I am, okay? Even that. Even some of from even the 80s, okay? The generations keep dipping and dipping and dipping. And today, it is so rare that this verse of Scripture is glorified. Children's children are the crown of old men. And for most of the people who have grandchildren... Uh, I have grandchildren through marriage, okay, <laughs> okay, and I will have grandchildren eventually, I guess, I guess, uh, well, no, I don't because we don't have kids, never mind, but, you know, there are those who have actual grandchildren, and yeah, it, it, it's, a, it's a glory to have the grandchildren, okay, all right, and the children's children are the crown of old men, you know, you think of Joseph, you know, I, you know, I like uh, what Jacob said to Joseph. It's like, I never thought to see your face, and now I get to see your seed, you know? And the glory of their children, uh, and the glory of children are their fathers. Oh, dude, how many times I've heard that. I hate my father. Why? Why do you hate your father? Why do you hate your father? I've encountered some, it's like, well, it makes me do things I don't like. Like, what? And with some of them that I've talked with, you get it out of them, it's like, okay, so wait a minute. Your father doesn't want you running around with people who are dealing drugs and breaking into places, so that's why you hate him. Okay, right away, what he's like, okay, so that at least that father has some semblance of trying to teach his son something, okay? But the majority of it that I have encountered. Why do you hate your father? And when it comes out, because the fathers are too busy with themselves. And then they say, well, it's all for you. But see, you're doing it out of the wrong premise. You're doing it so that you may glory in and of yourself. The glory, yes, children's children are the crown of old men. Yes, but who receives the crown? Those who strive lawfully. To sacrifice, charity, which is self-sacrifice. Excellent speech becometh not a fool. And what's excellent? Excellent speech. 
the Word of God, the Gospel, the Scripture, okay? Excellent speech. Becometh not a fool. A fool says in his heart there is no God. Much less do lying lips. A prince, Israel. Hmm? Lying lips. Verse 8. A gift is as a precious stone. Now, I didn't write any verses down for this verse, but you could do a little on your own time. A gift and salvation is by what today? It is by grace, through faith. It is the gift of God is as a precious stone. And Jesus Christ himself, the chief cornerstone, the blood of Jesus Christ is precious. He is precious. Okay? A gift is as a precious stone in the eyes of him that hath it. Whithersoever it turneth, it prospereth. Prospereth. That gift, wherever the Lord turns you, it prospereth. Proverbs 20, Proverbs 20, verses 26, on to verse 29. A wise king scattereth the wicked, and bringeth the wheel over them. The spirit of man, lowercase s, is the candle of the Lord. Right there where it says in John chapter 1 that he, uh, Jesus, he was the light of all men, meaning when you're alive, you got light behind your eyes, and when you die, it's not there, okay? Okay, the spirit of man, lowercase says, is the candle of the Lord, meaning the Lord has given you life. Searching all the inward parts of the belly, okay? Verse 28. Mercy and truth preserve the king. And his throne is upholden by mercy. Verse 29. The glory of young men is their strength. And the beauty of old men is the gray head. Verse 26 there. A wise king scattereth the wicked. Ecclesiastes 4. Ecclesiastes 4. Like, Brad, yeah, you said this was going to be about elderly people, but right now it seems like you're bashing them. Sure does, doesn't it? Because the elderly are the ones that are supposed to bring up the children. The fathers and mothers are the ones that are supposed to bring up the children. Those elders are supposed to teach the younger. And what have they taught them? As they themselves have lived. I, 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 me, 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 and here you go. Ecclesiastes 4, verses 13 on to verse 16. Better is a poor and wise child, wise, wisdom, fear of the Lord, than an old and foolish king who will, who will no more be admonished. Mm. The impossible is possible with God. To say God that it's impossible for God to save someone, that's dangerous. The problem is God, unlike what these stupid Calvinists say, God does not force salvation on anyone. He never has. He never will. Okay? He never has. He never will. Okay? Never has, never will. Calvinist. Scum. Okay? But, the older you get, the more entrenched you get, the harder it is. The harder it is. It's not impossible. But it becomes more and more improbable. 
like with these nursing homes, man. I it's it's brutal for me to go to a, a nursing home. Why is that? Because a majority of not all, not all, but a majority of the people that put their relatives in these nursing homes, they're putting them there to die. They've become a burden to them, and it's easier to just put them off in a nursing home. And there is a real need for ministry onto the elderly. There really is. You know, when we went to go see that uh, relative friend or whatever, um, you know, my wife was there, and, and the, the woman's boyfriend was there and, and whatnot, and my wife just read scripture to her while she was asleep. And the older gentleman in his 80s should have seen his face, man. Just lit up like a candle. You know, ha hearing my wife read the scriptures. Okay? Just having her read the scriptures. I read scriptures too, but, you know, my wife was like right there just reading the scriptures to, to, uh, to the woman that was there. Beautiful. There is a real need for a ministry unto the elderly. But see, what we see right here, better is a poor and wise child than an old and foolish king who will no more be admonished. The older you get, the harder it's going to get for you to come around. Because why? I'm set my ways, right? Can't teach an old dog do new tricks. That's not entirely true. The impossible is possible with God. But the, the longer you wait, the older... I got time. I, or, I, got, I got to think about that for a while. Right? The longer you go, the harder it's going to get. And the harder it gets for you, the less likely that you're going to be broken of your self-righteousness. Then you're going to die and go before the Lord at the great white throne. It's like, what, 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 what? And it's like, dude, you had every chance. But I will, I will, I will. But see, that doesn't make it impossible. And there are these stupid Christian church buildings that do have these elderly ministry. But what are they doing? They're encouraging them, yes. But are they like, you know, sir, ma'am, do, do you know who Jesus really is? Do you know what salvation really is? Can I, can I share with you true salvation? Can I share with you the real Jesus? No, they have to bring them to bingo and to potluck dinners and stuff like that and giving them facials and stuff like that. And in and of itself, you know, you want to threat them, fine. But a ministry unto the elderly. And you know what? How many people nowadays will sit and listen to the elderly? When I was a child, when I was a kid growing up, okay, I always took the time to sit and listen to the older people. When I was working at the VFW, you know, the whole hair down to my backside, sodomite that I was at the VFW, you know, with all those World War II veterans and the Vietnam veterans, which some of them were kind of scary. But nonetheless, uh, I was the younger. I would take time and sit and listen. Listen to, like that older gentleman that uh, marine guy who, you know, who, video I can't watch without crying, okay? Uh, I would sit and listen to them and listen to their stories, listen to their experiences. I mean, it's getting late in the game nowadays. If you ever get the chance to sit there and listen to a World War II veteran, that's a, a, a kid from today. If they were to sit and listen to a World War II veteran, uh, they, they'd be like dumbfounded because it's two different generations, yes, but it's also basically two different worlds. Those of that generation are so far removed from what is today. And it would it be a benefit for those younger ones today to hear that. But that's lacking. And see, verse 13 here, Better is a poor and wise child than an old and foolish king who will no more be admonished. Hmm. 
were out of prison. <laughs> In 2009, he cometh to reign. <laughs> Whereas also he that is born in his kingdom becometh poor. Someone coming out of prison who is reigning, but yet those who are in his kingdom becometh poor. Must mean that he's the king of his own little castle. He is his own God. He will be like the Most High, doesn't it? Yeah. I consider all the living which walk under the sun with the second child that shall stand up in his stead. There is no end of all the people, even of all that have been before them. They also that come after shall not rejoice in him. Surely, this also is vanity and vexation of spirit. And today, are the younger rejoicing in the elder? Because of what the elder is teaching the younger? No. No. And hence, because of that, elderly people, and there are elderly people out there who have so much they can give to this generation, but it's, it's, it's just gone so far. And if you hear of the younger kids today, it's a pity thing rather than a genuine concern, rather than I can learn, I can benefit and pass on this benefit to others. It's so lacking nowadays. And why? What has happened? What has happened? Go to Jeremiah chapter 5. Jeremiah chapter 5. Jeremiah chapter 5, we want verses 1 on verse 9. Jeremiah chapter 5, verses 1 on to verse 9. Run ye to and fro through the streets of Jerusalem, and see now, and know, and seek in the broad places thereof. If ye can find a man, if there be any that executeth judgment, that seeketh the truth, I will pardon it. And, they, and though they say, the Lord liveth, Christians. Surely they swear falsely. If you're a saint and you want to call yourself a Christian, that's your problem. Okay? I love you. You're a saint and you want to call yourself that, that's your problem. Okay? Don't expect me to refer to you as a Christian. Uh, I would rather call, I would rather just slap you as an insult rather than insulting you by affixing you to Rome. Okay? But that, that's a different thing. Okay? Don't trust the Christian people. Yeah, yeah, don't trust the Christian. If you're a saint, like I said, you want to call yourself a Christian, no, you're not going to hell, but dude, dude, what is a Christian? What is a Christian? Yeah, yeah. And you spend the three hours trying to explain that and witnessing, and they get the deer in the headlights look, it's a waste of time. Verse, verse 2 again. And though they say, the Lord liveth, like these Christians do, surely they swear falsely. O Lord, are not thine eyes, excuse me, O Lord, are not thine eyes upon the truth? Thou hast stricken them, oh, but they have not grieved. Thou hast consumed them, but they have refused to receive correction. They have made their faces harder than a rock. They have refused to return. You look at some of these like uh, Methodist uh, older pastors who are embracing the LGBTQ and now they've added a whole bunch of other letters onto it, whatever, whatever in the name of Chadez that is, okay? Hmm? You look at this. They've refused to return. 
They say the Lord liveth, but they deal falsely. And plus, they want to get you into a phallus house, which is not authorized for us in Scripture today. God does not dwell in temples made with hands, people. You need to remember that. Therefore I said, surely these are poor. They are foolish. The fool says in his heart, there is no God. Behaving foolish is what? Behaving as if you say in your heart there is no God. For they know not the way of the Lord, nor the judgment of their God. And most Christians don't. I will get me to the great men. Hinge great. Hinge great. We're going to touch on that a little bit. And we'll seek unto them. For they have known the way of the Lord. Now stop right there. Put your finger there. Stop right there. Now look at that. Great men is not necessarily denoting or mentioning those who are elder, elderly, right? Right? Of course. But look at the context thus far. And will seek unto them, for they have known, having a working knowledge already present. Great men is, we're going to see this, got a great reference for this in Job that we're going to hit on, okay? But this is not necessarily saying it is elderly men because it says great men, right? But, and will speak unto them, for they have known the way of the Lord and the judgment of their God. But these have altogether broken the yoke and burst the bonds. Our Lord, now what's the obvious reference there? Take my yoke upon you and learn of me. Okay? But the great men, you know, Great in age, perhaps. Remember, in this context, great men is not saying necessarily that they're elderly men or anything like that. But you can't really get away from, for they have known. Now, known could mean any age demographic, yes. But see, the inference is someone, a great man, who knows what's going on, and but yet is supposed to be the one inferring onto the other. And they do in this context. But what do they do? They've broken the yoke and burst the bonds. Sleazy believists are a perfect example of this. Okay? <laughs> Just believe and receive. Don't worry about it. Yeah, you, you shouldn't do that. But don't, don't worry. You're, you're one saved, always saved because you just believe. Okay? Uh, yeah. And of course, the sleazy believist is all against scriptural brokenness, contrition, fear of the Lord, calling upon the name of the Lord. They call that works. You know, that's that's especially the Richlingite blend, okay, where they go about that, okay. But, uh, yeah, good example of that, about these people who are supposedly the great people, who have known the things, but yet they burst the uh, broken yoke and burst the bonds, and instead put on them yokes of iron. Wherefore a lion out of the forest shall slay them. And of course, check your margin there. It might be the reference for 1 Peter chapter 5. Our adversary, the devil, as a roaring lion, walketh about seeking whom he may be able to devour. Okay? Wherefore a lion out of the forest shall slay them. And a wolf of the evenings shall spoil them. A leopard shall watch over their cities. Everyone that goeth out thence shall be torn in pieces, because their transgressions are many, and their backslidings are increased. Oh boy, America. <laughs> it's not talking about America, but I mean for instruction and righteousness. Okay. And notice leopard. A leopard shall watch over their cities. Can the leopard change his spots? The older you get, the harder it's getting, isn't it? How shall I pardon thee for this? Thy children have forsaken me, and sworn by them that are no gods. Why have they forsaken them? 
Because where are the elders admonishing them and bringing them up in the nurture and admonition of the Lord? When I had fed them to the full, they then committed adultery and assembled themselves by troops in the harlots' houses. Oh, and go ahead and read Proverbs 7 and make the tie-in there about how she layeth at wait at every corner. Okay? Go ahead and tie that in for yourself. Okay? At the harlots' houses. Mystery Babylon the Great, the mother of harlots and abominations of the earth. They were as fed horses in the morning. Everyone neighed after his neighbor's wife. Shall I not visit for these things, saith the Lord? And shall not my soul be avenged on such a nation as this? See, it's the consequence of the elders why the elderly are not being provided for as they should be today. That does not mean that the children are innocent. See, that, that's the thing you got to remember. Okay. You know, the, your little this little darling angel that you're raising up to be a, a little monster. They're, you know, sooner or later they're going to get to the point where they know what and can grasp and understand what it means to be a sinner against God. And by then, you've already created a little Eddie monster. Great men. Job. Oh, but before we get to Job, okay, let's touch on Deuteronomy chapter 28 very quick. Verses 47 on to verse 51. Okay. When a nation turns its back on the Lord, when a people turn their back on the Lord, not individually, but in, in a general sense. Okay. We the saints are the minority. Christianity is the majority. Deuteronomy 28, verses 47 on verse 51. Because thou servest not the Lord thy God with joyfulness and with gladness of heart, for the abundance of all things, therefore shalt thou serve thine enemies which the Lord shall send against thee, in hunger and in thirst, and in nakedness and in wants of all things. And he shall put a yoke of iron upon thy neck, until he have destroyed thee. We just read about how they burst the yoke and the bond. And they've replaced it with a yoke of iron from the Jesuit order. And right here, this is our instruction in righteousness. Hunger. They're not being fed the word of God. They're not even being fed a Bible today. Okay? Thirst. Same thing. And nakedness, not covered, not covered. Why aren't you covered? Because you don't have proper covering, because you don't even know what it is. You believe the Jesuits. The Lord shall bring a nation against thee from far, from the end of the earth, as swift as the eagle flieth, a nation whose tongue thou shalt not understand. Hmm. A nation of fierce countenance, which shall not regard the person of the old, nor shew favor to the young. Some of you say well, of Catholicism, well, they're, they, yeah, they, they honor the old, uh, but you got to remember, Catholics are earning their way toward heaven. It's not a thing of genuineness. There may be some Catholics who are genuine in it, but overall, overall, they don't care about the old. Because you've got to remember Chaldeans, the Babylonian religion, okay? Babylon, Egypt, Catholicism, okay? And he shall eat the fruit of thy cattle, and the fruit of thy land until thou be destroyed. Yes, all our taxes that all your taxes that you pay, they go to the Vatican. I wish I had the documentation to prove that. I can't prove that. Okay? 
the last time that I tried to reach out to that whack job, Eric John Phelps, it was a question about the, uh, you know, give me document, give me a book, give me something I can document that our taxes are in fact going to, they are, I mean, I mean, the Federal Reserve is the Jesuits bank, America is run by the Jesuit order, okay, so our taxes are going to the Vatican, regardless, okay, but anyway, but see, another nation other than ourselves here are being fed by what we do. You know, the Russian-Ukraine thing? We got people here who need that help. And they're sending the resources that ought to be used at home first, abroad. I'm not for wars of distraction like the Russian-Ukrainian war is. That's a distraction. They have you, remember? The Jesuits will have you focus on what's going on here. What are they doing underneath that they don't want you to focus on? When they put something in the limelight, always look down to see what they're hiding underneath. Okay? Remember that. That's how the Jesuit order works. That's how psychological manipulation works. Sleight of hand. Here, pay attention here. While underneath here, they got all chadez breaking loose. Okay? All right, and he shall eat the fruit of thy cattle and the fruit of thy land until thou be destroyed, which also shall not leave thee, thee either corn, wine, or oil, or the increase of thy kind, or flocks of thy sheep, until he have destroyed thee. And are not our resources being depleted? Are not we going to others to sustain us? Job, great men, the great men. Now this is a little whippersnapper. This is a very good example of appropriate dealing with elder people. Here, right here, the young whippersnapper, Eliud, in the book of Job. Job 32, okay? Young whippersnapper, okay? Eliu, he had his head on pretty right. He still accused Job, nothing like his three friends, because remember, the Lord did not address Elihu. Okay? When the Lord says, Who is this who darkeneth counsel by words without knowledge? He was talking about Job. He was not addressing Elihu. Okay? Elihu did not get a rebuke from the Lord. He didn't. Find it for me in the book of Job. You're going to go to, Who is this? Mm, he wasn't talking to Elihu. Okay, Elihu had it, had it wrong because, well, Job, you had to have done something. And by the time Elihu spake up, yeah, Job did do something, didn't he? He, we, we've covered that, okay? But we see in Elihu an appropriate way, the right way, in dealing with elderly people, or at least elder than yourself. Verses 1 on verse 9. Remember great men? So these three men ceased to answer Job, because he was righteous in his own eyes. Key right there. Then was kindled the wrath of Eliu, the son of Barachel, the Buzite, of the kindred of Ram. Against Job was his wrath kindled, because he justified himself rather than God. And that's what Job ultimately did because of the wearing of the stones. We've already covered that. Also against his three friends was his wrath kindled because they had found no answer and yet had condemned Job. Now, pay attention. Now, Elihu had waited till Job had spoken. Why? Because they were elder than he. Clue. We call that we call that in uh, reading scripture, we call that clue. We call that evidence right there. Yes, we do. That's a clue. Okay? When Elihu saw that there was no answer in the mouth of these three men, 
Then his wrath was kept. Eliu, the young whippersnapper, sitting there. He was the youngest out of them all. He, the right way, waited and heard the elders' arguments and what's not. He sat there like a sponge. It's like, oh, you th oh man. Dude, but Joe, dude. Okay? <laughs> okay? All right? And Eliah the son of Barachel, the Buzite, answered and said, Oh, wait. Did we finish? Let's read five again. When Elihu saw that there was no answer in the mouth of these three men, then his wrath was kindled. Verse 6. And Elihu the son of Rachel, the Buzite, answered and said, I am young, and ye are very old. Wherefore I was afraid, and durst not shew you mine opinion. Stop. I've, I've been witnessing, I've, I've had uh, a couple of occasions where a young kid was trying to talk over me when he asked me a question and I was answering and I actually shouted at the kid. It's like, hey, shut up! You asked me! I'm answering! Keep your mouth shut, kid! <laughs> one, one kid just, just like, you know, because he kept talking over me, interrupting me. He asked me a question and before I answered it, you know, I pulled out the little sword and it's like, okay, I'll answer. You want to hear the answer? And I double-checked. I did that for the same reason. It's like, okay, can I show you this? You want to know? You sure you want to know? Like, yeah, I want to know. It's like, okay. I'm reading it right away. He's interrupting me. It's like, hold on. It's like, shut up, kid! You asked! I'm giving you the answer! Okay? All right? But see, right here. And, uh, and Elihu the son of Rachel the Buzite answered and said, I am young, and ye are very old. Wherefore, I was afraid, and durst not shew you mine opinion. I said, Days should speak, and multitude of years should, don't look at me, should teach wisdom. Liar had his head on right about this. But there is a spirit in man, and the inspiration of the Almighty giveth them understanding. Verse 9. Great men are not always wise. No, they're not. No, they're not. And the wise here, book of Job, wisdom, fear of the Lord. Neither do the aged understand judgment. There, there's that guy down the road, uh, that stupid Methodist pastor guy, um, who's probably at least my age. The guy has no clue of scripture. None! Then again, he's a Jesuit infiltrator, I believe. <laughs> as they all are. Okay? See, here in Elihu, we see a type. Elihu waited. He, he, Elihu spout off at the mouth. Oh, he sure did. He didn't get a rebuke from the Lord. Show, show it to me. Show it to me. Okay? He did. Elihu did not get a rebuke from the Lord. Okay? It was you know, Job's three friends. Why? Because the aged men were the ones that were supposed to know. But they did what? They didn't know. And they condemned Job. Okay? But here the young whippersnapper did the right thing and waited until he gave credence. He gave them respect. Then, and see, there's this stupid thing out there that I have gotten into very um, heated debate, not actual argument, okay, arguments with people over this. Is respect given or earned? It's earned. Really? Respect is earned, huh? Hmm. That goes along the lines as you got to earn your way to heaven, right? Hmm. Here's the problem with that, dear friend. 
Okay? Now you want to go on in the comments section about this one. I I'm your huckleberry. Okay? Respect is given, not earned. Okay? Not earned. Why? Why? Because if that said person, you being your own God, have set the hurdles before that person, and they've crossed every I and dotted every T, I said it like that purposely, and run through every hoop, every hurdle, did every single thing to your standard because you are like the most high, at the end of the day, it's still up to you to give that respect, isn't it? Isn't it? You could say, well, I have to. No, you don't, do you? And you know that better than anyone. Because, see, you, 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 it's like, oh, well, this guy did everything I thought and everything I required. So, yeah, I'll give you my respect. <laughs> respect is given, not earned, people. Okay? And when you, I, I remember that, that idiot, Bill Maher. Uh, it's like, respect is earned, not get, no, because at the end of the day, you're the one who ultimately has to give it. Because also, if it's something earned, then it's by debt. And hence, not by grace. Not something that is given. Right? Right? Okay? Seriously. I know, I know even some of you Christians are like, well, respect is earned, not given. You're a twit. And I say that with <laughs> charity. You're a twit. You, you got rocks in your head. Respect is given, not earned. And Elihu in this context gave that respect. Because why? I said days should speak, and multitude of years should teach wisdom. And Job's three friends said truth, but ultimately they condemned Job. That was the error. The, the friends of Job had 95% good. It was that 5% that was deadly. And um, Job, by wearing of the stones, made his own choice to justify himself rather than God. Elihu in this context is a good example of giving the respect unto the elders. Even when the elder might not have been worthy of his respect. But see, that's the point. It's given, not earned. Okay? And see, this idea that it's earned, not given, all stems from, ye will be like the Most High. And if you had half a heart, you would know. You'd know that's the truth. I choose to give respect onto one of my enemies. I choose to. Okay? I choose to. I choose to give respect onto people. Okay? It's it's given. Not her. Okay? Don't don't forget that. Don't forget that. Now let's look at something else. Now we just seen in Job here, Elihu. Okay, Elihu. How he was giving respect unto those who were very old. Go now to 1 Kings chapter 12. 1 Kings chapter 12. First Kings chapter 12, verses 6 on to verse 11. This is Rehoboam, son of Solomon. Okay? Now there were prophecies here in work. Yes, there were. Okay? Yes, there were. But, verses 6 unto verse 11 in 1 Kings chapter 12. And King Rehoboam, this is the son of Solomon, consulted with the old men that stood before Solomon, his father, while he yet lived, and said, how do ye advise that I may answer this people? Hey, at least he went to the elders, right? It's like, okay, you guys been here, done that. You were with my father. What, what do you think? 
And they spake unto him, saying, If thou wilt be a servant unto this people this day, otherwise if you will choose to be a servant unto these people, to help these people, okay? Jeroboam, the son of Nebat, is ultimately what would become of this. But let's keep reading. And they spake unto him, saying, If thou wilt be a servant unto this people this day, and wilt serve them, and answer them, and speak good words to them, then they will be thy servants forever. Good advice. Show a little charity, self-sacrifice. Okay. But, but, verse 8, he forsook the counsel of the old men. And you got to consider Rehoboam, son of Solomon, who was given, who got the throne after Solomon, seeing what Solomon in his latter years became, the opulence, the wealth, the fact that he could have any woman he chose. Okay? Is it possible that Rehoboam might have had a little um, entitlement? Uh, you read about Rehoboam uh, specifically... You can see it in him. You can see, yeah, he, he. I, I do believe that Rehoboam is in heaven. I do. I do. I do. Uh, we'll find out if we when we get there, okay? We'll find out if he's there, okay? We'll find out when we get there. But he forsook the counsel of the old men. Well, why was that? Because look at that verse 7 again. That's, that's charity. That's humility. He's a king. And his, the elders are like, you know, these, these guys could be a real problem. Just, they got a legit thing here. Treat them with kindness. Be, you know, be sympathetic. Be uh, apathetic. Okay? Go ahead. Go ahead. You know, or be empathetic. Excuse me. Excuse me. I get those two confused. Okay? Trying, you know, trying to be there with them in their shoes, you know, have a little trying to understand where they're coming from kind of thing. But no, he didn't. Why? Because in order to do verse 7, that takes what? Humbling yourself. Ah. Ah. I think we're touching on something, ain't we? But he forsook the counsel of the old men which they had given him, and consulted with the young men that were grown up with him, and which stood before him. And he said unto them, What counsel give ye that we may answer this people, who have spoken to me, saying, Make the yoke which thy father did put upon us lighter. Remember, verse 7 is all about humility. Check this out. And the young men that were grown up with him spake unto him, saying, Thus shalt thou speak unto this people, that spake unto thee, saying, Thy father make our yoke heavy, but make thou it lighter unto us. Thou shalt, thus shalt thou say unto them, My little finger shall be thicker than my father's loins. Oof. Hmm. You, you roll that around in your brain case, what he's actually saying what those those guys are actually saying to Rehoboam, that's like Rehoboam should have been like come here what's wrong with you? of course he didn't do that but that's what he should have done he should have, he should have smacked one of these guys like what are you talking about? okay and now whereas my father laid you with a heavy yoke I will add to your yoke. My father chastised you with whips, but I will chastise you with scorpions. Goes to his friends. That denotes a mentality of entitlement. It's all about me. Verse 7 in this context is key to this. Because verse 7 is, okay, think about this. Rehoboam. There are prophecies at work here working against Rehoboam. We have to remember that. But remember, God wouldn't be a fair just God if he didn't at least give the people the chance even though he knows the outcome. Or else they could say, you never gave me a chance. I gave you a chance and you didn't do the right thing. Okay? That's a whole other different thing we can totally go off on, but we're not. Okay? You get the gist of it. Okay? 
Jeroboam goes to those who know better than he, the older men. Okay? As we are to go to our Father. Our Father, our Lord Jesus Christ, gives us good counsel. But it's up to us to go along with that, not by force. And why in the cover? And see, it also shows us that Rehoboam wasn't satisfied with verse 7 about the humility that the elders were saying to have. He wanted to make his name great. He sure did, didn't he? You sure are, kid, making your name great today, aren't you? Aren't you? Yeah. First Timothy chapter 5. First Timothy chapter 5. Verses 1 on to verse 8 to start. We're going to skip a little in this. Okay. Verse uh, 1 Timothy 5 has a lot to do with the widows. And this is pivotal for us as the church because it shows us now, the context is about widows, but it also shows us that God the Father, through his body, the church, has at least the thought of caring for those who are incapable or who need it. Okay? You also read about this in the book of Acts, where, they, where Peter says, hey, it's not me for us to leave the word of God and serve tables. Okay? Now, in the context thereof, it's about widows. But what is being overlaid, what is being said, is that there is within the church there to be provision for widows, fatherless, and even elderly are in this equation. Because a lot of the elderly, especially that I've encountered, especially at these nursing homes, where they, where they become a burden for the children who they brought up, they become a burden, and they hand them off to others so they can die there and go and visit them at their own leisure when they have the time. There's a real ministry there for the elderly. To just sit there, listen to them. Just sit there and read scriptures to them, like my wife did. Okay, yeah, the lady was asleep, but the, the older guy there, you should have seen him. He's like, just listening to my wife read the scriptures. Okay? <laughs> Just stand. I was there, of course. Of course, you know. She wasn't usurping authority over me either. Okay? you got to remember, uh, women can do that. Okay? It's when it comes to preaching and teaching, Scott, especially in a public setting. Okay? That's, a, that's bad. Okay? All right? All right? But, like I said, his face lit up. There is a ministry there for the elderly. To be there for the elderly. And if you're a youngster, it will do you well. Start having some respect for your elders. Give them your respect. Brad, you're kind of showing, saying, I know what we're going through. But see, our Lord, like Elihu, do what's right. Rebuke not an elder, but entreat him as a father, and the younger men as brethren. I've heard Baptists and even Charismatics. It's like, well, I'm an elder. You can't say anything to me. But entreat him as a father. My father. <laughs> and I, unfortunately, we don't speak anymore. He thinks I'm a heretic, and I think he's a heretic, of course. Uh, but, whatever, okay? He is my father. I love him, okay? Uh, the Lord chose him, and here I am, okay? So, but, I have had with my own father moments like, Dad, you, you, you said something. Um, can we look that over, what you said? Because um, this is right, and what you said isn't according to this. And even my father, at the, I'm addressing a specific moment. And wouldn't you know it was about the female preachers? 
because my father actually said. That's what Paul said. All scripture is given by inspiration of God. That's what God said to Paul. And he's like, yeah, I know you're right. No, I'm, th the scripture is right, Dad. Okay, the scripture. That was just one example. Okay, what did I do? My father was wrong. I entreated him as a father. Entreated. Father. My father, I love you. Can we can we go over that here, please? Can we go up? This does not mean that you cannot at all. I've seen Baptists and Charismatics use this very verse. It's like, well, you can't rebuke me. That they Jack Hiles idiots uh, did that. I mean, and even His Holiness has the videos on Jerk Hiles where they even I think even mention that. Okay. Dad, well, I'm an elder. You can't... Yeah, dude, shut up. Shut up. No, 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 no. And treat him like father. Go to them. It's like, like I said, you know, hey, you said something that was way off base there. Can we, can we talk about this? Can we, can we get, get the scriptures and talk about this? That's what that's talking about. Let's continue. The elder women as mothers, the younger as sisters, with all purity... This is why this is why pornography um, is so horrible. God wants us to see younger women as our sisters. And pornography teaches you to undress women with your eyes. And uh, even though <laughs> the feminist thing has been so destroyed because of the transgender thing, it's, it's actually kind of funny in a way, but it really isn't. But, um, <laughs> yeah, women are being treated and portrayed as objects. Sexualization, the feminization and stuff like that, okay? Yeah, yeah. And we're supposed to see the elder women as our mothers and the younger as our sisters. This is one of the many dangers of pornography, by the way. Okay? But I, oh, I've seen I have seen I've seen girls treat older women worse than young boys treat older men. I've seen I've seen that. I've I have seen within foot distance that. It's like Oh wow. Wow. And the one girl I said it's like mm -hmm. If I were your father, I'd slap the yellow off your teeth. <laughs> oh, she she looked at me and her face got like bright red. Oh, she she didn't like that. She didn't like that. <laughs> you know? Fledgling pride, that poor young man. Um, and this cannot be verified because the thing that was there is gone long gone. There's a brother of ours who um who rebuked him. Uh, in his speech, not like oh, like I get, you know, when I, I have a problem with pronunciation and I just don't think about it, you know. But um, a brother went to lovingly rebuke the fledgling of pride in a comment because he was using the word, and I'm not going to say it, but you'll get the gist, um, carp. You can figure it out. He was using that quite extensively. And our dear brother, it's like, you know, you're talking like a heathen. And it's fledgling the pride. I'll never forget it. Can't prove it to you because the comment's long gone. But he's like, I respect you as an elder, but... And then he goes off and tears our brother a new one. And I remember that. I remember that. And so does the brother, which... I'm <laughs> sure you might, might, I don't know, in the comment section. But I remember that. I remember that. I respect you as an elder, but... And just buried our brother alive when our brother was the one in the right. Hmm. 
think he did, chose what was right, said brother? Huh? You think he made the choice, the right choice? <laughs> you and I both know. I, I think perhaps maybe. No! Yeah, let's continue. Honor widows that are widows indeed. But it, now, see right here? This is giving provision for the church to, yes, take care of widows. But see, overall, this is showing us that the Lord has there something within the church to provide for widows, for orphans, and that kind of thing. God does not want us to be neglectful as saints for widows, for the fatherless, or for the elderly. It's not there. He's like, forget about it. No. No. But if any have children or nephews, let them learn first to shew piety at home and to requite their parents, for that is good and acceptable to God before God. So as your father and mother changed your diaper, wiped your backside, when your father and mother need it. Well, it's a burden. And you weren't as a child? You see how that, you see how that works? Like, we, like I said at the beginning of this video. You know, you, you go through that with the kid because they're going to grow up uh, and be on their own and then you won't have to do it anymore. But then when they get to a certain age, they might have to go back in the diaper. They might have to have their bum changed. They might have to have be fed through a tube. What do they do? Do the, do the nephews or the children step up? Well, Brad, what about those who can't? There are circumstances for that, absolutely. There are. Okay, like, uh, like a brother of ours. He, he, there's no way he could physically do it himself. There's no way. There's no way that he could care for his, for, for his, for his own mother or anything like that. He couldn't. He couldn't physically do it. And the others who could, what was their option? Psst, get rid of her. Now she that is a widow indeed and desolate trusteth in God and continueth in supplication and prayers night and day. But she that liveth in pleasure is dead while she liveth. And these things give in charge that they may be blameless. Verse 8. But if any provide not for his own. As we already saw, Paul said, like, the parents are supposed to lay up for the children. So when the parents can no longer be for themselves, where are the children to lay up for them? But if any provide not for his own, and especially for those of his own house, he has denied the faith. And it's worse than an infidel, because even squid love their own, right? And... We see here a clue in verse 9. Now again, we see this is in context to widow, widows and stuff like that, yes. But also this is showing us that there is provision within God to care for those who can't care for themselves genuinely. Okay? And the first option is who? Children. Okay? All right? You go on to read that they may take care, that the church may take care of widows who are widows indeed. Showing, yes, there is provision there if the children can't themselves. There is provision there in the church for that. Yes. But first, but if any have widow, uh, have, but if any widow have children or nephews, let them... Learn first to shew piety at home and to requite their parents, for that is good and acceptable for God. Requite their parents. Your, your mother and father wiped your backside. Now, if they need it, why ain't you doing it? 
I can't physically. Fine. You can't physically? Can someone else? They can't? Okay, fine. You were to continue reading, there is provision there within the body of Christ for that. Because no one can actually physically do it, or the means aren't there. That's fine. Okay? But number one option, your family, so-called. But look at verse 9. Let not a widow be taken under the number of under three score years. Two, four, six. Sixty. Sixty. Retirement in America used to be, I believe it was 60, but now it's almost near 70. And think about that. Scripture says uh, that our years, like in Psalm 90, that, uh, that hold your place here because this, I, I don't want to mess this one up. Uh, Psalm 90, okay? Psalm 90. All right. Verse 10. The days of our years are three score years and ten. Two, four, six, and ten. Seventy. Okay? Seventy. The time limit is 120, which was, which happened gradually. Okay? And if by reason of strength they be four score years, eighty, two, four, six, eight, yet is their strength labor and sorrow, for it is soon cut off and we fly away. Okay? So, 60 in light of Scripture is close around the time frame where the elderly will be going home. Okay? And it's funny that here in America, retirement is near, I believe it's like 65 or even 68 now. And we just saw in Scripture that the years of man's life are three score years and ten, 70 years. Well, we're to work, right? Yes, yes. But, you know, even you read in about in the book of Leviticus, I believe it is, or in Numbers, that there were uh, doing things for the temple, that there were age limits. That, okay, they do it for some certain number of years, and then they go to what they have earned and stuff like that. There is no problems with that. There is no problems with that. There is provision for that. But we see, let not a widow be taken into the number under threescore years old, having been the wife of one man, and we'll stop there. We looked at that because of the number threescore years old. Okay? Threescore years old. Two, four, six. Sixty. Sixty. Okay? Sixty. Scripturally, now there are older elders, of course, than sixty. But sixty is a good number. Sixty. That's when ought to be considered, okay? It's like, hey, okay? Now, while we're here, let's verse, verses 16 on to verse 21. If any man or woman that believeth have widows, let them relieve them, and let not the church be charged, that it may relieve them that are widows indeed. Again, Context clearly about widows, not even disputing that. But see, if that provision is there for the widow, is it not also there for the elderly who needs to be fed through a tube, have bed sores, and need to have their diapers changed just like you did as a child? What kind of God do you think we serve? Okay? If you don't think that provision is there within the church of the living God. Let the elders that rule well be counted worthy of double honor, especially they who labor in the word and doctrine. For the scripture saith, and I've seen people use verse 17 for the, hey, give me money. That, you know, that's, I can't dispute that. I think a little tact ought to be used sometimes when you go to that, but that is a true thing. Okay, let the elders that rule well be counted worthy of double honor, especially they who labor in the word and doctrine, the preachers, the teachers. Yes, yes, I agree with that. Scripturally, it's right there. Uh, there have been those who use that as a weapon. For the scripture saith, 
Thou shalt not muzzle the ox that treadeth out the corn, and the laborer is worthy of his reward. Absolutely. It's the problem comes when people start using it as a weapon or using it as a psychological thing for guilt tripping to get the do re me because they have cars and properties and mansions and stuff and nonsense, okay? Against an elder, elder received not an accusation. But, see, and now, see, they, and they, they like to stop at that. Like, rebuke not an elder. You can't rebuke me. It says that I'm to entreat you as a father. You say something wrong, um, as, as my, uh, my one young brother did to me. Okay? It's like, Brother Brad, I think you messed up. Okay, show me how. Oh, I did, didn't I? <laughs> he entreated me as a father. I'm not his father. In the faith, I'm only 15 years old. Well, I'm only 15 years old going on 16 years. Okay? I, I forget how old you are, brother, in the faith. But, I mean, age-wise, too, I've got almost 20 years on him as well. But he's done that. He's scripturally, when I've done things that were out of line, he's like, Brad, you, know, you, you said this. I think you were wrong. What was he doing? He was entreating me as a father. Okay? Rebuke not an elder but entreat him as a father. doesn't say that you can't rebuke them, but the way you do it is respectful as we saw in Job like Elihu did it. Not be patronizing like Rehoboam. Let me hear it. Ah, never mind. Oh, I like that. You get it? But see, the same people who say rebuke not an elder to defend themselves, they will also... Against an elder, receive not an accusation. But before two or three witnesses. See, I've seen the Baptists, especially, and the Charismatics, Charismatics too, um, who will go to these verses when they're teaching clear heresy. I'm the, uh, Steve Anderson himself even did it in his videos. It's like, I'm the pastor, I'm the preacher, I'm the elder. You can't rebuke me. <laughs> uh, no, well, yeah, you probably take out your AK-47 that you boast about, you nitwit, and shoot him. Okay, that guy's a devil. Stay away from that guy, Steve Anderson. Oh, wow. Okay, that guy's lost. That guy's a queer. <laughs> he is. Steven, hey, Steven Anderson, you uh, Anderson uh, followers, uh, you're, you're a messiah there, Steve Anderson. He's a closet sodomite. He's a closet sodomite. Yes, he is. Yes, he is. I knew that the minute I saw him. I used to be. I used to be. The, the Lord got me out of that. Okay? When you see remnants of the old neighborhood, um, okay, you can... It's like... Seriously, Little Rabbit. The very first time I heard, heard Steve Anderson preach... I heard him. The first time I heard him, I didn't see him. It's like, <laughs> this guy's a sodomite. Then I've seen, I actually have watched a couple of uh, Steve Anderson's uh, sermons before, long ago. And it's like, dude, that guy's a sodomite. Steven Anderson is a closet sodomite. And if he isn't, he's someone who's dealing with it and not well. Tell him I said so. Put that in your pipe and smoke it, huh? But against an elder receive not an accusation, but before two or three witnesses. Them that sin rebuke before all, that others also may fear. I charge thee before God and the Lord Jesus Christ and the elect angels that thou observe these things without preferring one before another, doing nothing by partiality. Ecclesiastes chapter 11. Let's end it here. Let's end it here. 
Now, <laughs> you, if you've made it this far, um, the elderly generation is partly at fault for the generation that has brought up that is not respecting them or choosing to give their respect. But see, the younger children of this generation, verse 9 and 10 in Ecclesiastes 11, Rejoice, O young man, in thy youth, and let thy heart cheer thee in the days of thy youth, and walk in the ways of thine heart. And, you know, you trust in your own heart, you're a fool. Okay? And in the sight of thine eyes, if it feels good, do it. But know thou that for all these things God will bring thee into judgment. But know thou, you're going to give an account for everything. That's why it would be good for some of you youngins to, uh, to get off your high horse and um, listen to your elders. Be there for your elders. Therefore remove sorrow from thy heart and put away evil from thy flesh for childhood and youth. Vanity. Vanity, because you're only going to be young for a little while. You're going to be old and dead for the rest of your life. <laughs> and after you're dead, are you going to be burning for eternity? Or are you going to be with the Lord? Which one is it? See, you youngins out there who, you emos and you kids who butcher yourself with tattoos and the piercings and, uh, you know, like you get barbed wire up here, uh, by the time you're 60, it's going to be down here. It's a barbed wire and by down here, it's a picket fence. Okay. I'm not going to get graphic, you young ladies, about certain things that you call perky. Okay. Beg your pardon, that was a little crude, but you get the point, okay? Things break down in time. Do unto others as you would have them do unto you. I remember, um, I remember, I forget what movie I saw it in, see? Yeah, and they don't cleave to you, right? But a uh, janitor and a teacher guy were talking to the breakfast club. Don't. Stay away from it, okay? Stay away from it. But they were talking and drinking a beer, and the one guy who was a jerk, he's like, think about it. When I get older, these kids are the ones who are going to take care of me. And the janitor guy says, I wouldn't count on them. Because where are the elder bringing up the children in the admonition and nurture of the Lord? The elders have brought up the children today that you see. But see, the children, when they reach that age, when they are aware of things, that means what? You're no longer without excuse. See, you can't, at the end of the day, you cannot be like Adam, the woman. It's their fault. It's their fault. Well, Brad, you just, they have a part in it, okay? All right? They can lead you to the water. But you got to make the choice to drink the water. They can bring you up as a little terror. But once you reach that age where you know that you can comprehend that you're a sinner against God and you are now accountable, the Lord's going to deal with you personally. He does. He already is. Okay? See, it's a two-way street. It's a two-way street. Okay? Your father and mother might have done things to you that were horrible. But see, now you might be at that age where you know better. And you do know better. And it's up to you to make the right choices now. And going on in those wrong choices and trying to blame others and not take personal responsibility. Hey, in that case, why don't you just believe and receive because God loves you? And go to hell while you're at it. This is what you need to remember there, boy. Little girl. Who make fun of elderly people. Who spit. Who 
use atrocious language, who mock them. Remember now thy creator in the days of thy youth. Chapter 12, verses 1 to verse 7. Remember now thy creator in the days of thy youth. While the evil days come not, nor the years draw nigh, when thou shalt say, I have no pleasure in them. If I knew I was going to live to see 49 years of age, I would have taken better care of myself. How many of you youngsters out there today, if you, if you get to be my age, which is nothing, how many of you are going to be saying the same thing I am? And I'm going to heaven when I die. But I'm paying for what I did as a lost man. Remember now thy creator in the days of thy youth, while the evil days come not, nor the years draw nigh, when thou shalt say, I have no pleasure in them. Oh, brother, sister, tis another day. Why am I here today? My body is doing things that it hadn't done even two days ago. What's going on, right? While the sun, or the light, or the moon, or the stars be not darkened, nor the clouds return after the rain, in the day when the keepers of the house, your legs, shall tremble, and the strong men shall bow themselves, and the grinders' teeth shall cease because they are few, and those that look out the windows be darkened and start to lose your sight. And the doors shall be shut in the streets when the sound of the grinding is low, can't hear well, and shall rise up at the voice of the bird, Getting up at the butt crack of dawn. Okay, some of us. Okay. And the daughters of music shall be brought. Oh, again, hearing. Okay. Also when they shall be afraid of that which is nigh. And fear shall be in the way. And the almond tree shall flourish. And the grasshopper shall be a burden. And desire shall fail. Because man goeth to his long home. And the mourners go about the streets. Or ever the silver cord be loosed. Or the golden bowl be broken. Or the pitcher be broken at the fountain. Or the wheel broken at the cistern. Then shall the dust return unto the earth as it was. And the spirit shall return unto God. Verse 8. Vanity of vanity, saith the preacher. All is vanity. <laughs> Thank you, Lord. <laughs> this wasn't actually not the way I thought it was going to be, but it's not up to me. There is a real place, a real need, I, I think, for ministry for the elderly. Yeah, it, it's harder for them as they get older, yes, but you know what? Especially in the society that we have today, the elderly people are, they go, they're put, uh, not all the time, but the majority thereof are put off in these nursing homes and treated like pets or something and just put there to die. Where are those saints going there? That's going to be it for this little video. Uh, hopefully gotten some something out of this the lord be lord be glorified that's all i care about uh thank you for watching this if you do you know yesterday we had a gorgeous day it was a rare day for october yesterday it was like near 75 degrees and not one minute of the day was wasted yesterday so but anyway that's going to be it thank you for watching this if you do we love you Respect is given, not earned. Why don't you try today trying to, why don't you try today to make the right choice? See you in the next video. Bye-bye.